All right, so this is an attempt to show you how to download Android Studio and install it on your computer. So I'm going to be going to, I just Googled Android Studio. I'm going to go download that thing. So this is the current version of Android Studio as of 620. So all I would do is I would click on this and run this particular application. Um, I've already done that, and it is a very long download, multiple gigs, by the way. It's not just this studio. It's also probably going to download parts of the Android SDK, which is also a very large set of files. Keep in mind that whenever you're going to get ready for this, you're going to need to download a ton of stuff. So once you have that installed, it'll come up with installation screen, and eventually you get to this point. So Android Studio 2.1.2 is what I've got here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually try creating a new project. So I'm going to start a new Android Studio project. For now, I'm just going to use the default application stuff. Typically, this is a lot like your domain name for a website, and it'll get placed in a particular package name, which is the reverse of that. This is the name of the project you're going to create. Um, I'm creating mine for a phone or tablet. I'm using a Nexus 7 in this case. Typically, you want to use whatever this uh, level API is, about API 15, because most of the devices use that. And at the moment, we're on 6 point something. So anything that's before that will work on later versions. So for example, here are some other versions that you could be using. I'm going to be using an empty activity. There's a blank activity that includes an extra menu, but I prefer not to have that. If you want some other basic layout, you can always try one of these other ones. So next, here's the name of my main file, my main Java file, and this is the name of my main layout, which is going to be an XML file. All right, we're getting closer. Now something to keep in mind is that down here at the bottom, there will be things running. And oftentimes, this will be running in the background. And for example, right now, notice that I'm not able to run anything. These are grayed out options. And that's just because it's still actually trying to build my particular files. If you're not having things come up right away, don't worry. It's probably still just processing things in the background. This is a very big application, and it takes a long time to boot up. While it's, we're waiting for this, let's actually explore what a project looks like. So if I go under Project and under this app, there's a number of different things here. So if I look in this middle one here, Java, the code that I talked about was this main activity. There's other test things in here if you're used to testing. But I want to start here. If I take a look at that by double-clicking it. So this is what the main activity looks like. Uh, it's got the package name, so a couple of imports, uh, and the class name, and then the only method it's got right now is the onCreate. This is basically the thing that gets launched as soon as an app gets created. There's also a few other things that are defaults in apps, on resume, on stop, um, a couple others. You'll have to look at those on pause. Those are things that um, are built into activities, and you probably want to take a look at what things you need to do when. So for example, if your app you want it to save files, you probably want to look at the onStop method. If you need something to like save the state when you do an onPause, so you reload it on resume, you'll need to deal with that. So that's the main activity. This is where I would write my other Java codes. Right now all it's doing is running its the default activities create and then setting a content view. And then this R file I'll get back to in a second. Down here, under the resources, the only thing that really matters is this activity main. Well, while we're waiting for that, let's take a look at a couple of these things. Um, so up here, there's the Android SDK, which is this button here. So this is where you would download and install various things for your Android apps. So if you want a particular library, you can set those things up here. I'm probably going to eventually want to upgrade to this Android 6 and update that. If you have a new install, you probably have that in here already. Uh, the more recent versions will compile for older versions, so that's probably the better way to go is to update to whatever the most recent version is. So I could click on this and then actually go update it if I wanted to. The SDK Tools uh, has a bunch of things that may be use of use to you. A couple that I think are really useful 
uh, the USB driver, if you're going to be launching on an actual device, it's probably a good idea to get this and install that. There's also this emulator that's required if you're going to do something like um, a lot of the Android emulated things. So for example, if I want to emulate a Nexus 7, I actually need to install this. This is not enough by itself. You still have to go into a device driver and go update uh, whatever your Android devices you're plugging in, tablet or phone or whatever. And then here, it turns out this only downloads this. It doesn't actually install it. So you actually have to go hunt down where this file got downloaded to and actually run it yourself. So a couple warnings there about those. All right. Hey, it finally loaded. So this is a basic layout. Um, this is particularly showing a Nexus 4. And if you like the drag and drop sorts of layouts, you can actually mess with things here. It's got all of your various list views and whatnot. And you can actually drag and drop to create your interface. And I can actually even emulate, for example, we're using a Nexus 7 in my class. And it is this one. No, it's not. It's this one. There we go. There's the camera in the right spot. So this is actually emulating exactly the device I would have. Now, behind the scenes, what this is doing is actually XML. This is actually the version I prefer to work in, just because I like to have full control of my environment instead of letting drag and drop things dictate what I'm supposed to do. And this is what I show in my uh, video tutorials. So that's your layout, and that's the thing that gets set here. Now this R file, this is important. It turns out if you have any sorts of issues in your XML, you've misspelled a word, you've set up layouts wrong, whatever it is, this R file will turn red and it won't show up. The R file is a uh, generated file created for your uh, applications, and it comes from all of these resources in here. Layouts, if I have a string that I'm trying to refer to, so this particular thing here, if I'm referring to that and I have the wrong name, so maybe I've forgotten this underscore, this won't get compiled and it will show this R file as an error throughout your entire code. So strangely enough, your main activity will show up as wrong even though it's actually your XML that's causing you problems. Drawables are also one of those things as well. So if you have images, you're going to make those into drawables in the Android world and make sure that the kind of file you put in there is the image file that Android can actually hand, handle. So PNGs are typically OK. JPEGs are typically OK. But if you misname them, if you use uppercases in the naming sometimes, uh, that'll cause you problems. All right, so I have those things. Now how do I actually run this and see if it works? So there's two ways. You could actually plug in a device and actually run it. So if I do that real quick. So I just plugged in my Nexus 7 tablet. So if I run this, it'll initialize this ADB. And assuming all my device drivers are set up and everything, there should be a little uh, hexadecimal code that says, allow USB debugging, the computer's RSA key fingerprint is, and it shows up on your tablet screen. And I'm going to say OK. Now that I have that, this shows up here. If I hadn't done that, it would show up as offline. So now I can actually launch this, and it'll launch onto the tablet. You won't be able to see this, but I'll show you this in the emulator in just a second. So notice down here, this is it uh, building the actual application. Hey, there it goes. OK, installing APK. APKs are the executable files for Androids. Uh, yeah, let's uninstall that and reinstall the new one. Hooray! So it says, hello world on my tablet. Notice down here that there's this thing called logcat. This will show you errors if you have them. Uh, if you have like a null pointer exception is a common one in Java, it would show up down here. And that would be a place where you would check for that to debug it. So I'm going to go ahead and stop that. Now what happens if I don't have an actual device? Well, then I'm going to have to use something called the, an emulator. That's this thing here. So I've already created one of these. But you can create a virtual device of basically any kind of machine that you want to. So if I start into this, I can create any one of these things. Tablet, TVs, wearable, all sorts of cool stuff. Or something that's very similar to what you want. You can also create an entirely new 
uh, profile that tells us what the resolution, the size, all that kind of stuff is. I already have this set up, so once you do this, then you need to actually start it. That's this little launch button. What you do is you hit the button, and then you wait a long time for it to launch. So emulators are slow, even on fast machines. This is a nice option if you want to if you don't have an actual piece of hardware to run things on, but if you can get your hands on a piece of hardware to test, it's far better to do that. All right, it's launching the emulator. All right, there we go. Hmm, I seem to be running out of space. You swipe up, just like you do in Android, and now I have this emulator that's running. So once I have that, I can close down the virtual device thing, and I can actually launch this, and I can run it on this thing here, which is my emulator. All right, and there we go. Here's my application. Uh, if it had things that I can interact with, those would be capable of being done over here. There's even like key presses to emulate, like flipping the phone sideways and that kind of stuff. So hopefully that gets you started on making your own app. Uh, once you start from there, then it's a matter of actually adding more things into your uh, program.